Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you'd empower us through your Holy Spirit so we can spread the good news of Jesus like wildfire. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Another fire season is upon us. Uh, Living here in the Southwest, we get used to that every year, don't we? Seems every year uh, we go through this where we watch parts of our country go up in flames. So far we've seen it in Arizona and California and Colorado and New Mexico this year and and we're recipients of some of the smoke and the ash that uh, comes into our valley as a result. The winds pick up, the fires spread quickly and they're very difficult to contain. Not that, not that efforts aren't made to try to contain them. Thousands of firefighters and millions of dollars get spent every year trying to get these fires under control. But in spite of the best efforts, lands are destroyed, homes are destroyed, businesses are destroyed, and sadly, sometimes lives are destroyed. And even when firefighters think they've got the fire put out, we know all it takes is just a little breeze on a little ember And in no time, it can be a raging fire all over again. That's what happens each year when the fire season is upon us. Well, today in the church, we're actually focusing on another fire season, and that fire season is called Pentecost. But it's a lot different than the fire season I just talked about, because unlike the fire seasons we're used to here in the Southwest, where lands and lives are destroyed, this fire season is actually something that restores lands and lives. It's called Pentecost. You may remember what happened just 10 days before this fire season began. It was 40 days after Christ's resurrection. Jesus had been making appearances all over, so people knew he had risen from the dead. And then right before he was going to ascend into heaven, he was preparing his disciples so that they could carry out their mission on earth. And in order to do that, he needed to empower them. So he told them that they needed to wait. He said, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you've heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Sure enough, 10 days later, that's what we saw happen. The gift of the Holy Spirit came special delivery in tongues of fire and landed on the disciples. We're told suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. The Spirit got the crowd's attention. And then the Spirit prompted Peter to get up and then share with the crowd what these fireworks were all about. So Peter proclaimed that this Jesus who was crucified and then rose from the dead has ascended into heaven, he is the long-awaited Messiah and King. Peter said, God has raised this Jesus to life, and we're all witnesses of the fact. Exalted to the right hand of God, he received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit, and he has poured out what you now see and hear. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Well, when Peter finished speaking these words, their hearts were burning. An amazing thing happened in Jerusalem that day. Thousands of people were convicted of their sin, and they were convinced that Jesus was their Savior. And then we're told that those who accepted Peter's message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Jerusalem was literally on fire. But the fire didn't stay contained in Jerusalem. We're told that God-fearing Jews had gathered from every part of the world for Jerusalem. They had gathered for the Pentecost celebration so they could celebrate and give thanks for the wheat harvest, but also so that they could celebrate the revelation of God's law on Mount Sinai. But that Pentecost was different. They received a new revelation from God. And when they heard that good news that Jesus is their Savior, they went back to all those places you just heard read about and they shared that good news with others. It all began in one room in Jerusalem, and it literally spread throughout the world. God's Holy Spirit was on the move. And ever since that Pentecost, God's Spirit has continued to be on the move all throughout the world as the good news of Jesus has spread. 
I wish we could see what all the Holy Spirit was doing all over the world right now. It would be amazing. Because sometimes it's hard for us to sense that the Holy Spirit's really on the move where we're at. And sometimes we wonder, well, why isn't the Holy Spirit doing more? I suppose the easy thing for us to do is find something or someone to blame. How about COVID? After all, didn't the politicians use the pandemic to declare churches as non-essential? Didn't they say that churches are dangerous, super spreaders of the virus? Didn't they make mandates that church doors should be closed? Sadly, in some cases, for some churches, those doors never opened again. So can we blame COVID and the government for dousing the Spirit's flame? Or is there more to it than that? As I think about all the confusion and the chaos and the conflict and just the craziness that we're experiencing in our culture, I know there have been times where it's been easy for me to lose sight of the mission of inviting people to know Jesus because I'm constantly getting bombarded by all kinds of this crazy news. And sometimes it's easy to forget how essential our mission really is. Instead of spreading the good news of Jesus' salvation like wildfire, we end up finding ourselves caught up instead in all the cultural crossfire. These words from... uh, Ephesians, where St. Paul writes, seem to really describe a lot of what's happening in our world today. He says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what's helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Sounds like our culture today, doesn't it? Sounds like us at times, doesn't it? Sometimes we allow the culture to guide our words and actions more than the Holy Spirit. We let the culture get the best of us, or maybe I should say the worst of us, and we end up acting more like the culture than like Christ. Instead of seeing what an amazing opportunity we have to share the good news of Jesus in a bad news world, sometimes we just add to the bad news and the brokenness of this world and what we end up doing is we douse the spirit's fire in the process like unused firewood decaying in a forest when the church isn't on fire for the lord and and his mission the church decays providing neither warmth nor light for a cold dark world god doesn't want that to happen he doesn't want us to put out the spirit's fire but too often it seems like that is what's happened through our words, through our actions, and, and especially through our inaction. We haven't always been God's Pentecost people. Instead of sharing the good news of Jesus with others, we've been content to just keep that good news to ourselves. And that grieves the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit who brought us to faith and salvation and wants to work through us to share that faith and salvation with others. When we cause the Holy Spirit to grieve, we're actually inviting the Holy Spirit to leave, even though the Holy Spirit wants to stay and work in us and through us for the sake of the kingdom. Do any of you uh, recognize that this world's kind of a mess right now? Do any of you sense that uh, this world's not offering us too many answers or too much hope? Do you sense that people are longing for peace and assurance and meaning in these confusing, conflicting times? The good news is we know where those blessings are to be found. They're found in our Savior Jesus and his forgiveness and salvation. God has given you and me the same privilege and responsibility that he gave those Pentecost people 2,000 years ago. We get to share the cure for the deadly sin virus. And just as Jesus' first disciples needed to be empowered in order to carry out that mission, you and I need to be empowered as well. And that happens when we gather together in this place. One of the things that we did today, which always needs to be the starting point, is we acknowledged our sin. We acknowledge our sin of dousing the Spirit's fire, of grieving the Holy Spirit, 
because we haven't been sharing the good news of Jesus as those Pentecost people 2,000 years ago did. But we do that not to beat ourselves up, but because God promises that when we confess our sin, he's faithful to forgive us. And the Holy Spirit rekindles in us that power through the forgiveness and salvation that Jesus won for us. Then we can go out as forgiven followers of Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, so that we can share Jesus and his love with a dying world. That's our life as followers of Christ. There's a holy rhythm that's involved here where we gather together as God's people, we receive God's gifts, his word, baptism, the Lord's Supper, and as we're receiving those God's gifts, those gifts, the Holy Spirit's on the move. Then once we've gathered and received those gifts, we scatter so we can share those gifts with others. Happens every time we gather for worship. Happens in a big way once a year when uh, people gather for Vacation Bible School. This week, we're gonna have 400 kids and 200 volunteers descending upon this campus. And the Holy Spirit loves working it, it through Vacation Bible School because uh, there's just something special about kids and the way they rejoice in God's love and share that love with others. And we're really excited to see what God's gonna do, not only during that week, but in the weeks to come as the Holy Spirit touches uh, all these children. I know there's one person who's very excited about Vacation Bible School. She's not in the room right now, but I think you can guess who she is. But in case you're not sure, check out this video. And she'll be like that all week, I guarantee you. It's just awesome. And it's contagious too. The Holy Spirit's working in and through her and through this VBS in a really powerful way. You know, there's a, another special way that um, our ministry is uh, partnering in the, the Pentecost work of Christ's mission. It's right here in Las Vegas. Many of you know Pastor Bo. He was on staff here for several years, served as a missionary in Latin America for a few decades with his wife, Barb. And he's really passionate about reaching the Hispanic community in Las Vegas, particularly uh, out of Redeemer Lutheran Church, which is on North Pecos Road. After VBS here this week, they're going to actually be holding a VBS next week for the Hispanic community. And as we partner with other uh, LCMS churches here in Las Vegas, our hope is that that Pentecost work can really catch fire and that we'll be able to invite a lot more people in this community to know Jesus. If you want to be a part of what uh, is going on with that mission, check out our website, check out the Church Center app, or just give Pastor Bo a call or shoot him an email. He'd love to talk with you about the special things that are going to be happening. And I know the Holy Spirit would love to be working through you as well. And don't worry, you don't have to speak Spanish to be a, a part of this. There's all kinds of ways that, that God can use you. So today, we've got a special opportunity, don't we? We get to celebrate what God did 2,000 years ago on that Pentecost through those uh, people who had gathered in Jerusalem. We also get to celebrate how the Holy Spirit wants to keep working through us in our own day too. And we've been reminded that no matter what's happening in this sin-broken world, as long as we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and his mission, the Holy Spirit's gonna be on the move. The Holy Spirit's gonna be working in us and through us. He'll keep the fire burning and he'll spread the fire through us so others can come to know Jesus and uh, join us in celebrating Pentecost, not just one day a year, but every day of our lives. And who knows, maybe the church will once again be known as a super spreader, not of the coronavirus, but of the cure for the sin virus, our Savior Jesus. Amen.